Our guest today is the governor of Illinois. He has been a public servant for the people of Illinois for more than a quarter of a century, both as a citizen and as a public official. He has focused on restoring ethics to state government and fighting for programs like Special Olympics, Misericordia, the Haymarket Center, and Special Children's Charities. He is a graduate of Northwestern University Law School and holds an international economics degree from Georgetown. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the state of Illinois, Pat Quinn. Governor Quinn. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you very much. I want to thank Jay and the City Club for giving me the opportunity to speak to everyone today. What a beautiful uh, place this is. The University Club is very special. I think we can see Lake Michigan here on the banks of Lake Michigan that our city of Chicago was founded and definitely our state of Illinois is a special place. And I think it's important uh, that we come together from time to time and uh, in such an august uh, gathering. Uh, our Lieutenant Governor Sheila Simon is with me and I do think it's important for the governor to report to the people at occasions like this uh, important issues that we have to work on and are working on. Uh, we've had a, a lot of activity since I first spoke to the city club uh, a couple, two and a half years ago. It was right after I got sworn in. Uh, kind of a tough time for our state of Illinois. We had a governor who was impeached and removed from office and a lot of bad things were happening. And it was important to restore confidence and faith and trust by the people in their own government. And I think we've done that. We know we have challenges. We know we have issues to work on. But it's important to have the democracy of Illinois, the people of Illinois, having faith in the honesty of their elected officials, especially the governor. And I've committed myself to cleaning up state government, reforming state government, doing things the right way all the time. And I want to thank all of those who have helped us along the way that were mentioned a few of the names. I know Chris Kennedy was at our table here. He uh, came at the, just the right time when we needed someone at the University of Illinois to be chairman of our board of trustees to restore confidence in our great university. He's done a great job. Same way with our tollway, which over the years has had some problems. I want to thank Paula Wolf for her dedication as chairperson, first woman to be appointed uh, chairperson of the tollway, to make sure we do things right all the time. And uh, that's exactly what I believe in. Uh, we passed ethics laws in Illinois that we enforce stringently. It's very important that we do that, not just for our own state, but to tell the whole world that Illinois is a place that uh, treasures honesty and integrity all the time. And we've also been able to enact uh, far-reaching this year education reform to have accountability on the part of teachers and all of those who are in the classroom to make sure we have the very best education possible in the land of Lincoln. Uh, the best way to have jobs today and tomorrow and forever is to have good education. Jobs follow brain power. And I believe in that from birth on. We have to have good childhood, early childhood education definitely accountable uh, kindergarten through 12th grade and good community colleges. I want to thank Sheila, Sheila Simon, who has visited all 48 community colleges in Illinois with over a million students. I think the average age of those going to community college is like 31 years old. We have a million students attending community college, uh, more than our four-year universities. They're key to being nimble in this global economy that we find ourselves in. We want to be able to make sure all of those who uh, need an education get that education. And that's certainly true of our four-year universities as well. We also have, working together this year, uh, been able to accomplish what some said could never happen. We were able to reform the work compensation, workers' compensation system in Illinois. Employers pay about $3 billion a year in premiums to that system. Many employers, especially smaller employers, pay more money to that 
than they pay in taxes. And we were able to reform the system. The savings will be anywhere from a half a billion to three quarters of a billion dollars a year. We also, together, working together, uh, coming together as a family of Illinois, we're able to do an important and I think historic uh, thing on behalf of the people with the sponsors here today, Karen Yarborough, and I want to thank Karen for her sponsorship, along with Kwame Raoul in the Senate. Uh, we ended the death penalty and abolished the death penalty in Illinois. That took some time and effort. <clears throat> that was an issue not everyone agreed on. I had both the opponents and proponents come in and speak and have their opportunity to have a voice. I think that's part of a job of governor is to be a good listener, uh, to be humble, uh, be proud of the people of Illinois, but also listen to the people of Illinois. And I feel that that was the appropriate thing to do given the history of our state. And we also did another important thing this year, where I, which I signed into law. And matter of fact, I think we got it passed into law. And not, not too far from here out there on June 2nd, there was a ceremony, a civil union ceremony where people came together. Uh, we passed the law establishing civil unions in Illinois and I think that makes our state best. We believe in civil rights and civil unions. So we've done some things in our state, but we have more to do. And I think the key to doing it right is always to put people ahead of politics. Unfortunately, in Illinois, that hasn't always been the case. Uh, there are political uh, forces that sometimes try to intervene, especially in the state legislature, and get their interests attended to ahead of the people. And the job of a governor is to be a champion of the public interest, of the common good, to always stand forward on behalf of what's best for everyday people in Illinois, folks who don't have lobbyists, people maybe who don't have big campaign contributions, but they're the heart and soul of our state. They're the men and women who answer the call to duty, who go forward in the face of danger, volunteer for our military and defend our democracy, our government of the people and by the people and for the people that Abraham Lincoln talked about at Gettysburg in 1863 in November and the Gettysburg Address that that government uh, shall not perish from this earth. So it's our job who are men and women of Illinois from the home state of Abraham Lincoln, the land of Lincoln, to speak out and show the world that we know how to do things right. And so I wanted to talk about several issues on the eve of the legislative session next week, important issues that affect people in Illinois that are uh, issues that have, I think, quite plenty of debate and public interest. I think it has a lot to do with the uh, fabric of our, our state of Illinois. One of them has to do with legislative scholarships, political scholarships that have existed for quite some time. Legislators get an opportunity to give away two scholarships to our state universities. Now, I believe in scholarships, and I have fought hard for our monetary assistance program in Illinois. That's a program that's been established for over half a century that provides scholarships to students who have the merit and ability to go to college but have financial need. And I think that should be our fundamental program all the time in Illinois. And I really don't think that spending 13 or so million dollars a year on a program where legislators get to give out two scholarships to those who may not have financial need or indeed may not have the merit to go to college, I don't think that's a good idea. And so I have, both earlier this year and this summer and last year as well, called for an end, an abolition to the legislative political scholarship program. There's no way to mend it. We have to end it. And I think it's important that we do that very shortly. I had an amendatory veto. Uh, the legislature will address that next week. Uh, but they can, if they wish, pass their own bill to end this practice that has been abused over and over again by not all legislators, but by some, unfortunately, who did things the wrong way with respect to uh, allocating these scholarships. And I think we need to send a message to the 151,000 young people and not so young people who don't get a scholarship. They're, they're um, uh, qualified to get the scholarship, but the money runs out in Illinois. We don't have enough money for everybody. And so there's a waiting list of over 151,000 people uh, to get a scholarship based on merit and need. So how can we tell those people that it's okay to let them not 
get anything, but it's, uh, we give away $13 million to those who may not be qualified. So I think that's one issue that will come to a head in the coming few weeks, and we need to make sure that we send a message of reform out to get things done right in our state of Illinois. Another one has to do with uh, the whole issue of Commonwealth Edison and Ameren and their uh, zeal to get a rate increase every year for the next 10 years. Now, I helped start the Citizen Utility Board about 30 years ago. I don't think that's a good policy. I think we need to protect consumers and families and businesses uh, from that kind of overreaching. Uh, this is gonna be a very controversial issue. I believe we need to have what's called the smart grid in Illinois, that technology, uh, but we need to invest in that in a way that comes to the resources of the company uh, rather than an additional rate increase on consumers and businesses. Uh, the Illinois Commerce Commission, under the bill that I vetoed, uh, would be cut out of the process. They've been around now for about 100 years in our state. The Illinois Commerce Commission regulates our utilities. It's important that they have a role at all times to protect consumers, especially after this summer where we had many, many service outages that were quite disappointing to me and I think to many people who are customers of ComEd in particular, that over a million people this summer for extended periods of time lost their electricity. Now, I believe in electricity. I think everybody here believes in electricity. <laughs> and we have to have that for our lights and our computers and everything else. And we have to have a reliable electricity and affordable electricity. And I want to work with ComEd and Ameren, our downstate utility, on a bill that is acceptable to the people of Illinois. I was down with uh, ADM, a great Illinois company, uh, 6,000 employees in our state. Uh, their CEO, Pat Wirtz, Miss, uh, one of the leading women CEOs in America, she said that she was dead set against the bill uh, and she was very happy that I vetoed the bill, that there's uh, uh, a need there in Illinois for the governor to stand forward on behalf of consumers and businesses and bring everybody back to the bargaining table and come up with a better bill. So that's another big issue that's pending before us. And there is a, another subject, you may have heard about it. It has to do with uh, gambling in Illinois. Uh, I think this is another matter that needs to have full public attention and sunlight. I spoke about it yesterday. I spent, uh, since May 31st of this year, where the legislature, in the course of about one or two days, passed a far-reaching expansion, massive expansion, wide open expansion of gambling in Illinois. Now, I think we gotta be very, very careful about that. It, in my opinion, it was done in a hasty manner, in a rather, um, I think, willy-nilly manner that uh, wasn't in the public interest. Uh, some of the things in the legislation that uh, was passed, uh, I think, are not good for Illinois. Uh, but I wanted to take this summer to listen to both the proponents of the gambling bill and the opponents of the gambling bill. And so I did that. I think that's what governors should do. And through the months of June and July and August and September, I did that. And yesterday we laid out a framework of what I think should be acceptable in our state when it comes to a very sensitive subject, gaming. Uh, I don't think we can have a wide open system in Illinois. We don't want to be the Las Vegas of the Midwest. We want to maintain the character and culture of our society. And uh, extensive gambling, casinos everywhere, that's not the way to go. And as a matter of fact, the legislature proposed 14 new casinos in Illinois. That's 14 new casinos in addition to the 10 we already have. Now that's too many. I propose that uh, we cut, scale that back, cut down on that number. You can't have that much. It's too many and excessive. Uh, and it also, I think, is uh, saturating uh, an already uh, heavy market. So what I propose is if you're going to have expansion, you do it in a balanced way uh, that balances things out geographically, that keeps in mind the need for economic uh, development and jobs in areas that are depressed, and also deals with the issue of some folks in our state going to Indiana or Wisconsin to gamble. So I propose that there be a casino in Chicago, properly regulated and framed, uh, and there also be a casino in the south suburbs near Indiana, and one in 
Lake County near Wisconsin. Downstate, there would be a casino in Danville, right on the Indiana border, and one in Rockford uh, near the Wisconsin border. That's five. To me, that's the limit. And I think most people in Illinois feel the same way. They don't want casinos at O'Hare and Midway airports. They don't want casinos at the state fair. And I think we don't want to turn the existing racetracks that we have in our state, uh, I think there's six of them, into gambling casinos. That's what the proposal, when, when you look at it and unpeel everything, uh, there was a desire to turn the existing racetracks into gambling casinos. To me, that's excessive. Uh, it's not healthy. Uh, we need to scale it back. So in the Chicago area, the nine proposed gambling casinos, I cut back to three. Downstate, the five proposed gambling casinos, I cut back to two. I think the essence of all of this has to involve honesty and integrity in the entire process. Now, frankly, this bill that never was sent to me, the Senate, after voting for it, uh, the Senate decided they would keep their masterpiece right where it uh, started. They never sent it to the governor. That handiwork never arrived on my desk, uh, but I nonetheless took the 409-page bill, and our staff went through it line by line. We talked to many, many people, not only here in Illinois, but outside of Illinois, other states. For example, other states like Indiana and Iowa and in Michigan, they bar campaign contributors or campaign contributions from casino interests to politicians. Same way with Pennsylvania, Louisiana, and New Jersey. All of them bar campaign contributions from the casinos and the operators and the managers to politicians. I think we should have that same rule and standard and law in Illinois. We don't want the casino operators infecting our politics and government with campaign money. Uh, I think this is just prudence and I think that's one of the proposals that's very necessary that wasn't in the bill, and I proposed it yesterday. We also proposed that video gaming uh, be in a situation where only those communities who actually vote for it are allowed to have it. Uh, right now, the law would allow anybody who does not opt out of the pr procedure to have video gaming as well. And so we propose that as a additional reform. We propose many other ethical uh, reforms that are necessary to make sure that gaming, gambling in Illinois is always on the up and up. We have what's called a gaming board, five people who were appointed to keep track of this whole industry to make sure it's honest. They've had 20 years of experience and you have to uh, take your hat off because they've, we've had scandal-free gaming with the existing casinos for 20 years. They're led by Judge uh, Aaron Jaffe today, and uh, they've done a good job at ferreting out things that could go wrong. And I think it's important that we maintain that. So in the case of Chicago, the proposal on my, that was passed by the Senate, not on my desk, they said, well, they wanted Chicago in many ways to regulate itself with respect to gaming. You can't be the operator of a casino and the regulator. So we uh, said yesterday, the Illinois Gaming Board, the state board, independent, with an experience that uh, has a, a good, strong history of doing the right thing all the time, that should be the entity that controls everything with respect to regulation of gaming and gambling in Chicago and everywhere else in Illinois. It's also important to understand that when we talk about this subject, we can't gamble our way to prosperity. There are some out there, and it sounds good if you say it fast, they think all of this is designed to create more jobs than you can shake a stick at, and all kinds of money will come flying down from heaven. I really think we need to put this in perspective, that if we're gonna allow any kind of gambling in Illinois or any kind of modest expansion, it must be tightly regulated, and we have to understand what its limits are. And, it, and any money that comes from this particular enterprise needs to go something to something that is worthwhile. And that's why yesterday we proposed that the tax breaks that are given to lucrative casinos be scaled back, that any of the real revenues that come out of this whole process be used for something important in Illinois, for education, the number one cause of our state. 
It's in our Constitution. We talked about the scholarships earlier, that some students uh, are denied scholarships because we run out of money. We have early childhood needs, and our schools in general need investment. It's important that if we're going to have anything like this, that it be done right, and that the proceeds be invested in something that makes a difference for real jobs. Because as I said earlier, if we're going to be successful with jobs, we must have well-educated, well-skilled uh, citizens, people who go to school and get the skills necessary to do well in this very competitive world. And so that's our job as adults. The great thing about America is that adults and parents sacrifice some of their present for their children's future. We're custodians of the future. So I think it's very, very important in Illinois in 2011 that we, the people, uh, not allow insiders and people with connections to fashion a law, a gambling law, that will harm our state, that will harm our reputation. That when people get off a plane at O'Hare or Midway, the first thing they see are armed guards and slot machines. I don't think that's the right message to send the world, that we're a world-class city here in Chicago and a world-class state in Illinois. I just went to China and Japan on behalf of our businesses and the people and agriculture of Illinois, and uh, we're held in very high regard. I told Chris Kennedy that the University of Illinois has 50,000 graduates in China, 50,000 alums in China, and they think very highly of our university. And we want to make sure that the whole world sees us as a special place of talent and commitment and integrity. So it's my job to make sure that happens. And so as governor of Illinois, we're going to have robust debate in the best traditions of Abraham Lincoln's democracy next week, and I'm sure in the ensuing weeks. And I look forward to engaging these issues of abolishing political legislative scholarships and replacing uh, the program with uh, real investment in scholarships for needy students. I look forward to making sure we get our fair to consumers and businesses and have an energy policy that listens to the major utilities, but at the same time always remembers that the people come first. And that definitely is the policy with respect to gambling. We want to make sure that we do it right the first time. That's the only way to do it. Uh, if we do it right the first time, we won't ever have any regrets, and we can make the will of people the law of the land. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, Paul, we're going to have some questions here. I, yeah. Governor, I okay. sure hope so. All right. Uh, if you have. Thank you, Dr. Doherty. Uh, this is the official. This is the official membership uh, card. So whoever filled this out, you're now a member. Mm -hmm. It's called right. putting. Okay. Oh, it's not a question. I feel like I'm in Springfield. Mm -hmm. I'll ask a question. Cowards die many times before their death. The valiant taste death but once. Governor, be gentle. Some people are saying by what you vetoed is a kill. You've poison pilled the bill. That you support it, but uh, Chicago Casino, but this will never pass. So by supporting, you support the, the casino in Chicago, but by vetoing this bill, you've killed the casino for Chicago. How would you respond? Well, I said it would veto the bill. The bill hasn't arrived yet, and I think that sort of undercuts the arguments of the advocates of the bill that they spent four and a half months holding on to it because they knew that it had uh, severe loopholes that were bad for Illinois. I don't think we should look upon this as a process of passing any old bill when it comes to gambling. We cannot compromise integrity. We cannot compromise making sure that we have strong regulatory oversight over a particular industry that cause, could cause great harm to Chicago and to the state of Illinois. That's why I believe in banning campaign contributions from the casinos and casino operators and managers of Illinois to any politician. I don't think uh, we should allow 
casino money to get involved in our politics, and other states feel the same way. Uh, so I think that uh, basically what I outlined yesterday was a common sense, reasonable approach to this issue. We scale back the massive expansion of gambling casinos in Illinois from 14 to 5. That's still an expansion, but it's a lot more modest than 14. We also uh, made sure that there would be very tough regulation of Chicago's proposed casino and any other casino. I think that's just common sense as well. And finally, I said that any of the proceeds, uh, we need to direct more of them to education. We cannot be giving out tax breaks to lucrative casinos while children in Illinois and students are shortchanged. Those are just, I think, fundamental things. And if the legislature cannot abide by those fundamental principles, then we shouldn't have a bill in the first place. Uh, the governor's job is to be, as I said yesterday, a goalie for the people of Illinois to prevent bad things from ever happening at all. And so sometimes you have to use the veto pen, or stamp in this case, and I was prepared to do that on the bill that the legislature concocted on May 31st. I think they realize that uh, nobody wants that bill, uh, and it's time to go back to the drawing board and do it right the first time. The next and probably last question. Uh, we need a little braver crowd in here, Jay. I mean, Bob Gallo, AARP, where are you, Bob? Corner. Running cam uh, banning campaign contributions from the gambling industry sounds good. There you go. Why not do the same for utility companies that have no competition and donate huge sums of cash to influence legislation? Well, uh, Bob is with AARP. I'm a member of AARP. I'm over 50 years old, and uh, I'm also a member of the Citizen Utility Board, and both uh, Cub and AARP are on our side uh, on the whole issue of uh, my veto of the ComEd legislation. Uh, we want to go back to the drawing board. I would tell all the good men and women of ComEd, come on back to the uh, bargaining table and we'll get a better bill and one that we can sign. And I've done that on a number of occasions in Illinois with legislation. We had a veto the first time and we made it better the second time. On the subject of banning contributions, I think we do have to be very careful with respect to utilities. Uh, there is a little more competition today than maybe in the old days where there were strict monopolies. Uh, uh, I'm open-minded to that particular proposal, but to go back to casinos, uh, casinos in general, if you look at the history of America, have had acute political interests. Their operators and managers uh, are kind of omnipresent with respect to the legislature, the city council. And money oftentimes can be a, a, an elixir for some in politics. So I think it's important that we, right now, uh, before any kind of expansion, whether it be modest or not at all, uh, deal with this issue that it's better for our people that campaign money not be a factor in any decisions affecting um, campaign or the casino uh, uh, regulation or, or whatever expansion or anything like that. So that's how I feel about that. I mean, there's no other questions here, Paul? I'm yeah, telling Jay, you, Governor, you wowed him. Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. You, hey, you, oh, wait, one more. Yeah. You, well, you could say it orally. We, we'll, we'll bend the rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is a very important issue. I, uh, okay, the question is, Illinois has a backlog of bills. When I became governor in January of 2009, it's probably about a bill, $10 billion. Uh, Comptroller uh, Topinka is here. She can attest to the fact that today we still have a backlog. And I think this is the time to deal with that. There's a story, a number of stories by the Associated Press dealing with uh, the state owing money to social service and human service providers. We owe money to the University of Illinois and to uh, universities and schools across Illinois. 
Uh, money is owed to the RTA and Metra and CTA. Uh, it's eventually paid. It'll always be paid. But there's a delay, and that causes um, difficulty uh, for many of the vendors of uh, Illinois and those who are institutions, schools who need the money to keep our economy going and keep people employed. So I went out in January of this year. It was quite difficult. Uh, but we were able to pass a uh, revenue bill in our state. Uh, in that revenue bill that uh, I signed into law, was half of 1% of the income tax would be devoted to a restructuring of our debt. Now, there are some out there, they deliberately do this, I think, who say, well, we can't borrow any more money to pay the bills we owe. Well, I don't believe in borrowing any more money to pay the bills we owe, but I don't want those who are owed the bills, essentially our lenders, to have to wait months at a time. So I propose the restructuring of the debt so that the vendors, the institutions, would get paid within 30 days. And the way they would be paid is that the state would assume the debt. Uh, it would be still a debt, but it would be the existing debt. And we'd restructure that and pay it off within a reasonable period of time. This has been endorsed by the Springfield Chamber of Commerce and I believe other ones. And it's a common practice of government to, when you have a debt owed to literally hundreds and hundreds of vendors, rather than have them wait months at a time, six months, uh, the state takes that burden on. And in this case, we could put four or five billion dollars into the Illinois economy almost overnight, paying off the bills, and the state would then pay that debt down over the period of time. Uh, it's still just taking, assuming an existing debt, and we would take the, the burden. I think that's the way to go. That's the best way to help our economy. That's the best way to help the vendors. And uh, there are those who are made a political issue. Uh, they said, actually, in January they'd help out, and then they decided they'd make it a political football. And we've been battling that ever since. Now, I do think maybe as we come to the close of this year, there will be a number of members of House and Senate, Democrat and Republican, who will say the best way to help business, the best way to help vendors, uh, human service in Illinois, is to pay down that debt, uh, follow a plan that we can work out together, and uh, I look forward to doing that. Okay, we have one more question. All right. Right along. It fits what you just said. Uh, again, on a membership card. Jay, we may have to combine these. Membership and question. If, you're, if you want to ask the question and you're not a member, you automatically become a member and you pay your 50 bucks at the door. All right. I'm available to help with the revenue process. Right. So how will you improve the state's poor business climate and change the very pessimistic view of Illinois among the corporate leaders? Well, when I became governor, uh, Ford had one shift south of here in Chicago. They have a stamping plant in Chicago Heights separate from their uh, plant that they uh, started in 1925, uh, making Model Ts that my grandfather bought. My father uh, bought a Ford over the years, and I drove a Ford. Uh, and so I believe Illinois is Ford country, but we only had one shift. And we worked hard with Ford, uh, one of the major American corporations worldwide, and we got a second shift uh, in January of last year. And I'm happy to say it looks like the uh, UAW and the Ford are going to come to a ratification of their latest contract. I sure hope so. Looks pretty promising. And uh, because of that, uh, and some of the incentives that we've put together, Ford will have a third shift in our state, uh, not only for the assembly plant, but also the stamping plant. Uh, that's how you grow jobs and keep jobs. You work with businesses. I've worked with Chrysler Fiat and Belvedere, worked with Navistar that brought jobs from Indiana to Illinois. Uh, a great vehicle manufacturer. We've worked with uh, Mitsubishi in, in Lormal, Illinois, uh, to keep them here and have them grow. We have Boeing manufacturing on the east side of the river. And I think it's important that we understand that uh, putting these uh, ingredients together, whether it's a big business, 
that's well known, or a small business that nobody knows, uh, but a very important business, because we believe that small business means big business in Illinois. You have to have a government that works with uh, those businesses all across our state. That's why I was able to win passage of a landmark workers' compensation insurance reform law this year that will save businesses as much as three quarters of a billion dollars. Um, when folks talk about the economic climate of Illinois, I think we have to be careful. Cranes this week, Cranes Chicago, Chicago Business this week, took a look at all the Midwestern states and rated our state number one by far when it comes to business climate. We shouldn't get down on ourselves. We have the best workers. We have the best markets. We have the best access to capital. Our state last year grew its exports by 20% over the year before. That was in 2010. This year, we're on pace to increase our exports 30%. 25% of all the soybeans we grow in Illinois, we sell to China, and they just have a great appetite from many people and many animals for more soybeans. And so that's why I went to China. We signed a multi-multi-million dollar agreement to sell more so soybeans to China and more products of all kinds. We have to be exporters. We have to develop new markets. That's what the people of Illinois are all about. They're ingenious. A company like Groupon that just started in 2008 had eight employees a few years ago. Now they have 6,000 employees, and about half of them are around here in Illinois. They look for smart people, well-educated people, people with skills. That's what Illinois abounds on. We're great, we have great universities, whether it's the University of Illinois, Northwestern, University of Chicago, IIT, our great community colleges, our four-year universities. We shouldn't sell ourselves short. And so my view is uh, our state, we always have to work on issues together, but I think we have a, a great state with great workers and great companies. Okay. That's good. Yeah, that's good.